Uh, thank you so much for this wonderful Sabbath morning. We give glory to God for enabling us to be here this second Sabbath of the year 2022. We want to welcome each and every one of us to the Sabbath school lesson study. And um, as we begin, allow me to uh, introduce our colleagues who are going to minister with us. Starting from my extreme left, we have Sister Beatrice Ucheng. Uh, Beto, kindly greet the congregation. Happy Sabbath. Happy day. We have Elder Isaac Wasonga. Saki, kindly greet them. All the time. All the time. The Lord is good and that is his nature. Thank you. We have uh, Brother Mangi. Brother Mangi, kindly say hi to the congregation. Happy day. We have Sister Ruth Ogando. Sister Ruth, say hi. All the time. The Lord is good and that is his nature. Thank you. Um, as we start our study this morning, I would like to ask Sister Beatrice to open for us with a word of prayer. Sister Beatrice. God, we want to come before you this morning, thanking you because you have brought us again at your feet. We invite your presence and the presence of the Holy Spirit that as we learn and as we go through your lesson, that Heavenly Father, that you would be glorified at the end of the day. We invite your Spirit to teach each one of us and we pray for those that are not here yet that you would bring them safe and at the end of the day we would all glorify your name because we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. I'm Eldo Pere Nyaroya. I also say Happy New Year. Thank you. In this last day, in these last days, God has spoken to us through his son. But in the la former days, God used to speak to our forefathers through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, God has spoken to us through his son. This morning or today, we are looking at a wonderful topic titled Message of Hebrews. The message of Hebrews. So this is not the message to the Hebrews alone. It is the message of Hebrews, meaning it is the message to everyone, but the me in Hebrews. What is written to the Hebrews, it is a message that can be to everyone. And our scriptural focus is Hebrews chapter 8, verse 1. Brother Mangi, you will do right to read Hebrews 8, verse 1. Hebrews 8 verse 1. Hebrews 8 verse 1. Mm -hmm. uh, it says, mm -hmm. um, Now the point in what you are saying is this. We have such a high priest, one who is seated at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heaven. Mm -hmm. Now this is the main point of the things we are saying. Now this is the main point. Mm -hmm. It is like saying, this is the conclusion of the whole matter. Mm. The gist of every other thing, the summation, mm. that we have a high priest seated at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. Mm. So, it means there are a lot of things which are being said. <laughs> but now the main one of it all is that Christ is seated at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. A story is given that... People were wondering, the children of Israel were wondering, if we are truly the children of God, why are we subdued by just any other nation? They were discouraged whether truly the God we are serving is the true living God. Let me bring it home. Today, we are, even in the world today, people may wonder which kind of God, Brother Isaac, we are serving. Perhaps you are hustling, you are a real hustler. 
searching for a job for years. And while other people are just coming, graduating, they're getting jobs quickly, or you are searching for a life partner. Others are coming after you, and they get the life partners. People may question, Kwani, which God are you, person, are you people worshipping? Is he really the true living God? Yes, I, I tend to think this is the kind of situation where the children of Israel are finding themselves. Yeah. But Paul writes a letter, a letter of exhortation, mm. a letter of encouragement, that no, God speaks to us through his son, Amen. who is the heir of all things and through whom all things were made. And then he tells them, the submission of every other thing, my dear brothers and sisters, we have a high priest. Amen. We seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Mm. So my dear brothers and sisters, we welcome everyone, we welcome each and every one of us so that we can look at this is the submission that we have a high priest. But it means there are also other things to, out of which the submission is all that. Mm. Sister Beatrice, mm. I would like to bring you in. We are told Jesus is our king. Yes. Apart from just being the high priest, mm. he's also our king. And actually, when you look at the writings of Paul the, in the book of Hebrews, it is a better king, a better Adam, mm. a better high priest. He's giving a comparison. Would you say something of how Christ is our king, a better king? Thank you, uh, Brother Opere, for giving me this opportunity. I really appreciate the fact that you have said, you know, we want to know what is the main point? So the main point we have found is that Jesus is the high priest. And he is the high priest. And so we are being told, I'm, I'm, I'm tempted to, to say that this lesson is, it wants us to know the characteristics of this Jesus that we want to learn about. And so here, one of the characteristics is that he is our king. As we read through the lesson, we discover that Christ was it, during creation, there was the three in one. God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit. And, and Jesus Christ was participating in this creation. And while they created, they bring in Adam and Eve and they bring Adam and Eve to the earth. And he's supposed to have dominion over the earth. But then the devil is here and he's thrown down with his angels. And so he comes to take over the earth. And so what? Sin comes in. And when sin comes in he, takes in, he takes the rulership. And when he takes the rulership, that means he is influencing what the children of God are supposed to be. As opposed to obeying God, they now want to obey the king of the earth. But then Christ, God the Father, was there and he already had a plan. And he sent his son, Jesus Christ. And this son... As we read uh, from Hebrews 1 up to 15, we will find that God now introduces Jesus as, he introduces Jesus as his son. And the, the lesson tells us, first God installs Jesus as a royal son. What is royal? A, a king's child. So if you're put on that throne and you're made to, he's an introduced them. He's introduced Jesus. After introducing Jesus, the second thing is he introduces his son to the heavenly court. So he brings him as his son, then he puts him there and he says, this is now your throne. That means he has taken the seat, isn't it? And so he is king because he's assuming that seat, rightfully so because God has given him that position. Okay? And then we see the third one is that He's, he's enthroned. To be enthroned mean, means to be put on the throne. Mm -hmm. So when you're put on a throne, you are the owner of that throne. Uh -huh. So you sit on that seat. So Christ is our king. He, is, um, he was brought to earth in a human form, yet divine. So he's coming to rule here. He, he is the king of the earth because he came to earth and assumed that human person and became the king on earth. And so because of him, he died on the cross so that we can be heirs of, this, of his kingdom. And, and God had promised that he would restore this earth and he would restore humanity. As we see in Genesis 3.15, I will put an enmity between you and the woman and between you and your seed and 
he shall bruise the head. And in Genesis 22:18, it says, In your seed all nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. So we are, if we are obedient to this Christ that has been put on the throne, he will bless us. Genesis, uh, in Galatians 3.16, he would grant you according to his riches in glory to be strengthened with, the might, with might through the Holy Spirit in the inner man. So as we read through these verses, we realize that David, David was promised that um, a king would come through his lineage. And we later find that Christ comes through the lineage of David. So, Sister Beatrice, yes. you are saying that Christ is a better king. Amen. Legitimately, when Satan uh, cheated Adam and Eve, true. he assumed the kingship of this planet. Very true. But now Christ comes and overthrows him and takes the claims true the 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 kingship mm. of the planet amen and now you are saying that in addition to that mm. there are things which now qualifies him god introduces him because he came and died for us mm. he brought us back mm -hmm. so he legitimately is the king but you brought us another very important point mm. that obedience now for you and me is for us to enjoy Christ as being our king, there is the element of obedience to what? As accepting what he has done. Amen. And so because mm. of that obedience, there is a question that ends this, this session that asks, how can we draw comfort, especially amid trials and knowing that Jesus is the ruler of the universe? Because the devil is here, he is still fighting to take that kingship, but Christ is on the seat. He will, the devil will still fight with us. There are many trials that will come. So what gives you comfort knowing that Christ is on that seat? And I draw my, my comfort from, uh, from a thought in the spirit of prophecy which says, He who slumbers not, who, continu who is continually at work, for the accomplishment of his design will carry forward his own work. Okay? And he continues to say, he will thwart the purposes of the wicked men and will bring to confusion the counsels of those who plot mischief against his people. And it also says, he who is the king and the lord of hosts, who sitteth between the cherubim and amidst the strife and tumult of nations, he guards his children still. Thank you. Thank so you. So I Thank am you. confident because my king does not slumber. My king does not slumber and he will thwart anything. So I have all that confidence. Christ yeah. is a better king. Amen. He is a better king because of what he has done. Mm. He is, we are now legitimately his. From creation... And redemption. Amen. We are told from the book of um, Hebrews chapter 8. Uh, when we continue, if we continue reading, you realize that uh, from verse 6, but now he has obtained a more excellent ministry in as much as he is also mediator of a better covenant which was established on better promises. Brother Mangi, the Bible is saying now, apart from, you see, we are talking of message of Hebrews. And we are saying that the, the, the main thing of which we are saying is that we have a, a high priest seated at the right hand of the throne. But now we find that in addition to that, that he is a better king. But we are also being told that he is a better mediator. He is a better mediator. Can you just elaborate? Because it is important to understand that Christ is a better king and also to understand, uh, to get another point that is a better mediator. Explain. Uh, thank you, uh, Melda. Uh, no, I think uh, when we want to talk about uh, mediation, or rather bringing out Jesus as a mediator and a better one at that, I know that should be covered under Thursday. But then, we always have to understand first, what does a mediator 
do. I mean, who is a mediator? You know, uh, from uh, the lesson or rather from the divination, we always have a mediator is one who stands between two parties to bring a settlement or to establish a relationship. Now, uh, for those who have uh, some knowledge about uh, diplomacy, you know, mediation is one of the processes of trying to resolve a conflict. Like we have warring parties, you know, parties that are in conflict. And then there comes a time which we call a stalemate when the somebody, a third party, has to come in between them such that he, can, uh, he or she can bring together an agreement between the two parties, you know. We have, uh, uh, Kenya is, uh, our country is known for being a very good mediator within the region, you know, especially, you know, during the time or the era of uh, president, the late president Moi, he used to uh, midwife and mediate uh, issues maybe in Sudan and all those kind of things. So, in this case, in the context of us uh, as Christians, we do know that we fell from grace, you know, uh, at the Garden of Eden when uh, Adam and Eve uh, sinned. And as such, it meant, you know, the relationship that God had established with us, with humanity and his creation, yeah, was destroyed. And so, because God is merciful, as we all know, he had to seek a way of trying to bring that back. Now, when you read a couple of uh, texts here, for example, when you talk about Exodus, uh, I think uh, particularly uh, chapter 4, verse 22 and uh, 23, you realize whereby Moses now is being sent on a mission by God, whereby God explicitly tells Moses what to tell to the Pharaoh. He says, Israel is my firstborn son, and I say to you, let my son go that he may serve me. If you refuse to let him go, behold, I will kill your firstborn son. Now, uh, literally speaking, even as we know in our human nature, there is that attachment uh, between a parent and their firstborns. Yeah, and particularly now, you know, the way the Bible language is, the firstborn son, because that is the first fruit of a womb or any parent. That is the first uh, kind of uh, living, quote-unquote, living thing that they own. And as such, is so dear to them. And this is what God communicates through Moses to the Pharaoh, that Israel is my firstborn son, that he will do anything to get the son back. Because, you know, the story of the Israelites, we know they were under captivity, they were suffering, and their cries had got to God. Then, I think uh, to bring this into perspective, going back to the uh, promise that uh, God makes through the prophet Nathan, you know, to King David, talks about, that is 2 Samuel chapter 7, the entire of it, yeah? He does give this uh, very specific promise in uh, 2 Samuel chapter 7, uh, verse 12 to 14. When your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your fathers, I will raise up your offspring after you, who shall come from your body and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be to him a father and he shall be to me a son. When he commits iniquity, I will discipline him with the rod of men, with the stripes of the sons of men. So, uh, in this case, reading through the Bible, we do know, uh, remember, we're trying to contextualize this in the message or the sermon that uh, the servant of God, Paul, was uh, having to the Hebrews, you know? Trying to bring out what is it that God has done over humanity over time. Yeah, going back to the sleeping off in uh, the Garden of Eden, then trying to establish that. Now, we do know that, uh, just a minute, mm -hmm. we do know that uh, the, this promise that uh, God gave to David is what we call the Davidic covenant. Okay, it was a covenant, and we do know normally covenants have to be uh, kept, and uh, God has always done his part of the bargain. Okay, so the insertion of a representative in the relationship between God and Israel, okay, at that time is still uh, evident in our day through Christ. 
Okay? Because it is Christ who, when we go wrong or we sin against the Almighty, is the one who intercedes for us. He mediates. He asks that, oh, that is our son. He is our creation. Kindly forgive and do this. And uh, in Jesus' his own words, uh, um, in John, in the Gospel of John, chapter 14, whereby he talks about I am the way uh, and the truth, that it is through him that we can get to God. Okay, and then lastly, what I may want to talk about, if you also read John uh, chapter 17, mm -hmm. the high priestly prayer, mm -hmm. yeah? whereby Jesus points out, uh, 1715, it was specific that I want to talk about. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. So, like a mediator does in uh, our world context, yeah. Jesus is pleading with his father, remember he's the son, that hey, kindly protect these people. Thank because you. in these days where they live, yeah, things are really bad. And uh, there is uh, maybe, Elder, if you allow me, there is one song that always drives me. I love that song. Mm -hmm. One day at a time. Mm -hmm. Yeah? There is uh, a line in that song mm -hmm. whereby the singer, she talks about Jesus, you know, if you are watching, it is worse than it was then. Like, the world in which we live today is really worse than in the days of Jesus when he was on earth. And yeah. as such, he continues to intercede for us, he continues to mediate, and that is why we have a promise of eternal salvation at the end of it all. Thank you, thank you so much, my brother. Sin brought a wedge between man and God. Yes. Like I say, I say is that the Lord's ears are not short, that he may not listen to us, neither his hands, but it is because of sin. Sin brought a, a, a gulf between man and God, like yes. you are saying. But now to bridge that gap, God sent his son to bridge the gap. Yes. And you've, as you've rightfully said, he is now living to intercede for us. Hebrews 7 verse 25 says, Therefore, he is also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him, since he always lived to make intercession for them. Yes. That now he lives to intercede for us. Yeah. Uh, there is this song, 180. Sister Ruth, I don't know whether you know that song. Oh, listen to a wondrous story. Oh, listen to a wondrous story. Counted once among the lost, wow. yet one came down from heaven's glory, saving us at awful cost. Who, who saved us from eternal loss? Who but God's son upon the cross? Yes. What did he do? He died. he died for you. Where is he now? Yes. Believe it thou, in heaven interceding. In heaven interceding. Great, A yeah. better mediator yes <laughs> viewers Amen. we are talking of messages in hebrews message of hebrews we have a better mediator seated at the right hand of the throne of god but in addition to that we find that we have a better king we have is a better mediator because he lives to intercede for us sister ruth when the children of Israel were fighting, in the book of Samuel, you know the case of David, and there was some, a certain giant, a certain champion called Goliath from the, of the Philistine, Anak, the men from Anak, those who are giants, yes. a champion. Jesus is our champion. Kindly just illuminate on that because we've realized that messages from Hebrews are very sweet. Just highlight Jesus again as a champion. Summarize it. And now that is why we have this champion. Yes, even as you've, tried, you've started by eluding, 
that you can only have a champion if definitely there is a war. And if there is a war, there must be a weak party and there must be a strong party. And in this case, when we look at the case of First Samuel 8, 19 and 20, we see that uh, Goliath, he, w he believed by the strength of himself, self, actually the main point there is self, which was portrayed himself most, that he believed he can be able to overpower them and overthrow them. And so from the side of the Philistines, he was their champion. But I want to use champion in quotes because he's not as strong as the champion whom God gave through the children of Israel. And now the children of Israel, they stand. Before that, they go to King Saul to... Um, to the priest who was there by then and they request him that we want to have a king and they forgot that God himself was the king they forgot the way he had led the Israelites out of the land of Egypt and to the land of Canaan they forgot all the miracles that had been performed and now here the human nature is when we have problems that is when we try to look for a solution but when we are on our comfort zones we forget the same situation they find themselves in. And so they decide, can you give us a king so that he can stand in our stead? And one of the reasons why a king had to be installed is because he had to stand in the gap when there was a fight. We see King David, uh, even King Saul, when there were fights, he was the one who had to lead them. King David, the same, he was the one who was to lead them. And so in this case, when they are asking for a king, the Bible tells us in 8, 19 and 20, uh, no, not 18 and 20, verse 17, sorry, someone who is there. First Samuel 17, 8 and 10. First Samuel. First Samuel 17, 8 and 10, it says, And he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel, and said unto them, Why are you come out to set your battle in Ari? Am not, am not I a Philistine, and ye servants to Saul? Choose you a man for you and let him come down to me. If he be able to fight with me and kill me, then I will be a, your servants and I will prevail against him and I will kill him. Then he shall be your servants and he shall serve us. So when they won the battle, if you are defeated, you are to be servants to that the, the people who had prevailed. And so that was the fear among the Israels at that time. But now the beauty is we find King David coming in david before he was first installed into a king he took in now as a champion he fought on behalf of the israelites and he won the battle now as we bring look it at now this, bring it now home <laughs> as christ our yes, champion yes. now i want to look at christ in these two perspectives in first perspective where he is our champion in the physical battle and also a champion in the spiritual battle now, let me start with the fiscal battle. Mm -hmm. The fiscal battle, just the same way David stood for them, mm -hmm. the same way Christ came. He died on the cross. Mm -hmm. He bore the shame, even the shame of death at the cross, because by then that was the most shameful death that any person could have died. But all, so that all humanity, you and I, all the viewers who are watching this message today morning, that you may know that Christ died for you. It is not for just a certain people. It's not just for a certain congregation or a certain dominion, but for everybody who believes. Actually, the utmost now word is you must believe in him so that you can attain this gift that he has given freely to every person who believes in him. Now, unto the spiritual battle. Yes. Now, this Sister spiritual... Ruth, because Paul says that we are not fighting against, against flesh and, and blood, blood. Yes, yes. but against principalities Valities. and powers of darkness. <laughs> Continue. Yes, yes. Mm. And I want to quote exactly those words in the book of Ephesians, <laughs> chapter, chapter six, six yes. verses eight. Yes. So, verses 12 says, mm -hmm. we re For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, mm -hmm. but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness mm -hmm. in the highest place. That verse exactly explains who Satan is. Mm -hmm. His work here, we heard from the first speaker who talked about the, the Jesus as the king. Now, he, when Satan took over, he became a temporal king. Mm -hmm. But we have an assurance of an everlasting king, who is Jesus Christ, who prevailed 
the wars and these powers and spiritual wickedness of the evil one. He has overpowered them. And now we have an assurance that he's fighting for us. He's standing in the gap for us so that we can have the gift of eternal life. And now, how are we to own this? Now, he proceeds by telling us now, therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the evil days that having done to withstand. So what the question will be, what is this armor of God that we ought to wear so that we can be able to withstand what verse 12 is telling us? So verse 14 says, having your loins guard with truth. So what is truth? Truth is the word of God. What is the word of God? It is Christ himself. What a joy of knowing that we have Christ through the word of God. We have God with us every single time of our life. In case you're going through any challenge of life, my viewer, just know that you can read this word and you can be revived and you rejoice in him. Then he proceeds to say that your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of, of peace. peace. This gospel of peace is what is keeping us alive at this time and that is what we ought to proclaim to the whole world so that they may know who Christ is. There are people, there is a misrepresentation of the character of Christ that is going on in the world right now and suddenly we feel that we don't know who Christ is. But when we go through this message of to the Hebrews, that is the message to you and me, then we know who exactly Christ is and we come to him boldly knowing that he will work for us. Then he says, taking the shield of faith. Now, what Sister is Ruth, faith? just read it, just read it up to uh, uh, verse 17 yes. so that we, all right. we in then the interest taking, of time. All right, thank mm. you. Taking the shield of faith wherewith you shall quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and the salvation, helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God. Praying always with prayer and supplications in the spirit, watching therefore unto all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Clothe yourself now with this armor of God. Amen. You see, viewer, uh, friends, it is not just a question of knowing the message of Hebrews, mm -hmm. but now of what, of what benefit is it to us? Mm -hmm. We realize now Christ is our king. Yeah. is our better mediator Amen. and he said now we can confidently approach the throne of grace what what a message of hope that when we sin we can still run to christ because he's still in the holy of holies mm -hmm. and confess our sins and we'll be cleansed Amen. that now apart from that he is our champion and he gives us the tools through which when we clothe ourselves with them as enumerated in the book of Ephesians. He gives us, he does not just leave us, but he tells us, you clothe yourself with the helmet of this, you have the helmet of faith, mm -hmm. the, the, the truth, the which is the word faith. of God, mm -hmm. the, the shield of faith, all that, mm -hmm. the readiness, all that, we are given the tools to, to protect us Amen. so that we can enjoy the benefits and we are not alone. That is one thing, Sister Ruth, which gave me joy, that we are not alone. Uh -huh. Revelation God that. said there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against Satan and his angels. But Michael won. Uh -huh. So he is a champion. Amen. He truly won in the combat, solo combat, which you and I are in it. Amen. We are never alone. Uh -huh. Brother Isaac, this part gives me a lot of joy. We used to have priests. You would go with an animal. But we are told they would also die. <laughs> but now we, the Bible says we have a better priest. high priest. Mm -hmm. A better high priest. <laughs> Brother Isaac, messages of Hebrews, which gives us joy. Unlike carrying a goat every now and again, carrying a goat, I don't even know if that would be sustainable yeah. right now with the population which has increased on earth. But now we are told we have a better high priest. Mm -hmm. Brother Isaac, give it. Thank you so much, uh, engineer. Uh, I love the book of Hebrews so much because of the way it brings to us Christ. Remember, in this book, Paul is hiding his identity. And the book Paul is writing is introducing himself as Paul, a servant of God. Yeah. And the book of Hebrews, you don't find a place where Paul is introducing himself because he's talking to the Jews and us today. We have talked about Jesus 
as the king. We have talked about Jesus as the mediator. We have talked about Jesus as the champion. And so we also need him as the high priest. We used to have a priest before. And as the engineer said, this priest died. But you wanted an immortal high priest whom God himself gave through an oath. And I like, I like the way the Bible introduces this uh, priest in the book of uh, Hebrews chapter 5 verses 2 where it says who can have compassion on the ignorant and on them that are wayward for the himself also is best with weaknesses. The high priest that Paul is introducing is one who came and also faced challenges that you went through. And so as Paul is speaking to people who are beaten, people who are suffering, people who are almost losing hope, then he brings one of us who also faced temptations and this is Jesus Christ. Let me bring to you four things that the old priests used to do. One of them is that they were mediators between God and humans. When there is a war, we need a mediator. And we thank God that the chief high priest who is coming to us is coming before we all die, before we still have some life in us to save us. And so he's making us friends again with God. That is Jesus Christ. The next thing that these people used to do was that they used to teach God's law. They were explaining to the Jews the laws of God. But this Christ that we are talking about the high priest is also our teacher. He also explains to us God. He tells us, reveals to us, to us the nature of God. That God is a God of love. Then the other thing is that they offered sacrifices to be forgiven and purified. And elder here has said that people used to come with bulls, with goats. But we are happy that this high priest we no longer need bulls. We no longer need goats. We are coming directly to the throne Amen. of God. And so we are very happy to associate ourselves with this high priest. Amen. In fact, the lesson makes it clear that this blood of goats could not clean our minds, our hearts, our conscience. But this blood of Jesus Christ, our high priest, is able to clean all of us, the internal and the external, Amen. our minds, our hearts, and even our conscience. Mm. This mm. Mm. Then what they used to do is they blessed others in the name of God. Mm. The priest blessed others in the name of God. Our priest, high priest, is also blaming, uh, uh, blessing us every now and again. Is our chief our priest. Is our the, the lesson writer was saying that is the one who wins a battle as a solo combat. As we are behind and is in front fighting for us. So we no longer need any other priest to intercede on our behalf. On the other hand, we are all collaborators of Jesus. We are royal priesthood. That is in the book of 1 Peter 2.9. That as a royal priesthood, God has chosen us, yeah. and so we have privileges that we can now enter the temple and focus on the throne of God and seek the face of God. We don't need any other earthly mediator because we have a high priest. We have several privileges in this high priest. So, thank you, Brother Isaac. Uh, uh, something just to add, you say he blessed. You know, wonder in Numbers saved them. That this is how you will disperse the children of Israel. Yes. The Lord bless you. The Lord, the Lord shine his countenance upon you. Yes. The Lord be gracious unto you. Mm -hmm. He blessed. Mm -hmm. He used to bless the people. And yes. Christ blesses us. You can add another, if you have con it's something to conclude there. So I, I want to conclude mm -hmm. by saying what is indicated in the book of Hebrews chapter 5 mm -hmm. verse 6 mm -hmm. as he says also in another place mm -hmm. you are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek mm -hmm. this chief priest 
is our priest forever and ever and ever. Amen. 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 Beloved, beloved, it gives hope that unlike the other earthly priests who die, this one <coughs> does not die. In fact, Hebrews chapter 9 verse 11 says, But Christ came as high priest of the good things to come with a greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with the hands, that is, not of this creation, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, he entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. Beloved, he is there forever. He is a high priest forever. And this is what the, uh, Hebrews 7 verse 24 said, that he is in the holy of holies interceding for us. Do you know, the, uh, viewers, this is a very, very uh, uh, message, a touching message. That Christ, where is he? He is in the Holy of Holies. What is he doing? He is interceding for us. But he will not be there forever. He will be there for a time. But a time will come when he will leave and he will remove his priestly garments. Now, now he will come as a king. He will no longer come as a lamb. Now he will come as a lion from the tribe of from Judah. Judah. Mm -hmm. Now is the time for you and I to mend our ways with the Lord. When he is still, when mercy still lingers, when Christ is still in the holy robe, holies. When we are talking of message of Hebrews, it gives us the true position, you and I are mortal. We are not here for eternity. But we have advantage to approach the throne of grace with confidence. For because Jesus is in the Holy of Holies. Beloved, as we are coming to the conclusion, Brother Isaac brought a certain point. That the blood of the goat, blood of goats and calves and bulls would cleanse. But they would cleanse externally. <clears throat> but Christ came and mediates a better covenant. A better covenant. Sister Ruth, just in less than a, a minute, what would you say? What would you say? What makes it a better covenant? Does it mean the old, the old covenant where people would go with bowls was bad? Or what makes it better covenant? Just in less than a minute. Okay, thank you, my elder. Uh, a better covenant. Yes, the one which was there, in as much as that uh, they were using the blood of blemish. Mm -hmm. The blemish could be seen from the human perspective as blemish, but maybe it was not wholly blemish before the throne of mercy. And now when Christ comes, his blood is now fully without any blemish and all that was done in the Old Testament was just a copy mm -hmm. and now we are going to get the real thing which is the heavenly throne mm -hmm. which is the heavenly covenant and now uh, in the Old Testament we had a covenant which I can say was um, a good covenant now when we talk of a better covenant this covenant is now with Christ himself and that's why he says and I emphasize on the words where he says he's now giving it to us through the son himself initially it was done through prophets and everyone else but now this one it comes exactly through Christ himself he is standing as the high priest who intercedes for us the perfect the faithful one actually I love the words the, the, the faithful words because mm -hmm. initially all that was done uh, maybe in the Old Testament was not well, it had the moral obligation where it was not correct but now with this Christ himself he is faithful faithful unto everything that we do faithful into saving us unto utmost faithful into making sure that we have the gift of eternal life and only through him the old covenant, Saki, you want to ask something? Yes, I, yes. I wanted to... to, to uh, In a summarized form. To bring the, the comparison between the old and the new covenant uh -huh. so that we may see the difference. Uh -huh. The old covenant, uh -huh. it was a shadow. Uh -huh. 
But the new covenant is a reality. Uh -huh. Heaven sanctuary. That one was talking about earthly sanctuary. Earthly sanctuary, another one is heavenly. The second one is the old covenant is inaugurated with the blood of animals. Uh -huh. But this one of the new covenant is the blood of Christ uh -huh. himself. Then the old covenant was sacrifices that did not perfect anyone. Mm -hmm. But in the new covenant, we have a sacrifice that perfects us all. Mm -hmm. In the old covenant, we had many sacrifices. But in the new covenant, we only have one sacrifice. The old covenant, it was done by the mortal priests. But this one of the new covenant is a mortal priest, Jesus Christ. And the last one, it was a perfect priest in the old covenant. But in the new covenant, we talk about perfect priest. Sister Beatrice. I, I love the words of Hebrews 8, 1 and 2, which says, Now of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. And I know you like that verse. We have such a high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of majesty in the heaven, a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle, which the Lord pitched and not man. Okay, and so we are Christ is the great high priest, he ministers in the right hand of God. And and the, there was a sanctuary on earth, and now this one we are gonna have a sanctuary in heaven, and it has been pitched not by the hand of man but by God Himself. Amen. Thank you so much, thank you so much, my dear beloved brothers and sisters. <coughs> Message of Hebrews. We have such a high priest, but we told is our king, is a mediator, is a champion, he is a better high priest. That is not only now mediating in the old covenant, but a better one which transforms heaven within. He creates heaven to us a new heart. There is this song. There is a fountain filled with blood. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins And sinners blind beneath that flood Loose all their guilty stain Loose all their guilty stain Loose all their guilty stain and sinners blind beneath the flood lose all their guilty stains. It is, this is a covenant which is by his blood. Peter, first Peter 1 verse 8 says, 18, For you know that it was not with perishable things, such as silver or gold, that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you by your forefathers but by the precious blood of christ a lamb without blemish or defect Amen. beloved a better sacrifice mm -hmm. a better high priest mm -hmm. a better king what therefore is required of us we need to approach the throne of grace with confidence mm -hmm. accept what he has done to us by faith mm -hmm. because at the end of it all it would be of no value if we do not accept what christ That's has done. done for us no wonder there is a chapter dedicated to faith in mm -hmm. the book of hebrews that for us to enjoy the kingship mm -hmm. the mediation work which christ has done for us mm -hmm. all this we have to approach the throne of grace by faith. Amen. May we surrender our lives to Christ. Mm -hmm. Because there is no any detergent on the face of earth. I was trying to check any detergent which can wash <laughs> sin. There is none except the blood, the blood of, of Jesus the Lamb. Christ. Amen. May we surrender to Christ Amen. so that we may be cleansed from all our unrighteousness. Amen. May God bless you. Brother Mangi, I would like you to close for us with a word of prayer. All right, brethren, let's believe and pray. Our Father who has never we come to you this morning, grateful that you've been able to take care of us. Thank you for the messages that we've got from your word. See, Lord, 
We come before you seeking, Lord, that you always stand with us, hold our hands. And as your promise in Psalms 91 verse 2, Lord, we'll always call upon you. You are our fortress. Thank you for Jesus, who is uh, our king, who is our priest, who is our mediator, and who is our champion. As we continue with this journey in our Christianity, Lord, we seek that you establish our ways, and all the time, Lord, we look up to you, that we do not falter, that him that seeks to bring us down, Lord, we may, we may prevail upon him. Thank you for this day. We seek your blessings this Sabbath, and may your word be sanctions among your people. This is our prayer in the whole name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, viewers. God bless you. Let's continue to study the Bible to get more what the Lord has for us as we prepare for his second coming. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen.